This week on Christian World News, escape from a war zone. In hiding for nearly six weeks, this family slipped past Russian troops to safety in western Ukraine. Plus, is a global food crisis on the horizon? How the ongoing war in Ukraine is affecting food supplies, putting hundreds of millions of people at risk. And a global ministry in disarray. How leadership failures are affecting Hillsong. And what is the Lord doing in the midst of it all? Welcome to Christian World News. I'm Gary Lane. The war in Ukraine turns to the east. Russian troops are targeting cities in the east as they prepare for an offensive on the Donbass region. In Mariupol, satellite images show apparent mass graves. Ukraine authorities claim up to 9,000 civilian bodies uncovered. Meanwhile, 2,000 Ukrainian troops and some 1,000 civilians are holed up in a sprawling steel plant there. CBN senior international correspondent George Thomas joins me now from southeastern Ukraine. George, you're about two hours north of Mariupol, where some brave residents of that city made it out this week. So what did they tell you? Uh, yeah, I met a couple, uh, one of about 80 uh, residents of Mariupol that made the uh, epic journey out of uh, Mariupol, Gary. I mean, it was harrowing. This particular person said they went through at no less than 25 Russian checkpoints. And this particular person I spoke to is a Christian part of a local church there. And what he described to me was just horrific. He said the last two months, especially the last month, uh, there are bodies everywhere on the streets, in the courtyards, in uh, right on the streets, people who have been dead for 10, 15 days. Nobody has picked them up. Uh, he said uh, he misses the sound of the birds uh, in the air. All he hears is rocket fire and explosions uh, going off. Really, really awful uh, situation. And you've been traveling to frontline areas where Ukrainians and Russian forces are engaged in heavy shelling and fighting. So tell us what you saw. Yeah, I traveled uh, about an hour, hour and a half east of my location and to the front lines, literally where Ukrainian and Russian forces have been duking it out for uh, several weeks now. And in this one particular uh, uh, area that I went to, there's 95 percent of the population has evacuated, but there are a few handful of residents, mostly elderly. And I joined a convoy team uh, going into the front, going to the front lines to deliver much needed supplies. Keep in mind, Gary, they have no water, no electricity no heat. They've not had this since February 24th. And it's awful, awful condition. No running water. And so the only lifeline that these folks have are, are these uh, humanitarian groups like these Christian organizations that work for various churches here in the southeast. And George, we know that this is an important week in Ukraine. Tell us about it. What Christians are doing yeah. there to prepare it. Tell us more. Yeah. Yeah, so let me wish you a good Friday. It's actually, it's actually Easter weekend. The Orthodox uh, Christians here in Ukraine, as well as the countries of the former Soviet Union and across the Middle East are, are celebrating Easter. And so the members of the uh, chaplain service in the Ukrainian army are planning to go this weekend to the various uh, checkpoints and to the various uh, locations right on the front lines. They're going to be delivering much needed critical supplies, food, and so forth. But they're also going to bring a word of encouragement during this Easter season to remind people not to give up hope in the midst of uh, absolute chaos and uh, confusion uh, here in uh, southeastern Ukraine. Definitely a lot to uh, pray about, George, and we'll pray for your safety. Stay safe, my friend. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're most welcome. Imagine spending 42 nights in a basement hiding from enemy troops. Well, that's what Anya and her children endured after the Russians took over their city. After nearly six weeks, they finally made their escape with the assistance of some workers with CBN's Orphan's Promise. Our Wendy Griffith has this report. On this Wednesday night in Lviv, Anya and her 11 foster children are finally able to laugh again. After escaping Verdansk, a city west of devastated Mariupol, Verdansk was seized by Russian forces just four days into the war, and the family was forced to stay in a bunker below their house for 42 days. It was hard to um, live there, and it was dangerous. But every day when we woke up, we were very thankful to God that we are still alive and we are still able to worship Him. Anya says whenever they needed anything or were afraid, 
they would pray. We were reading Bible, we were worship, we were fasting, and that's why we had this peace with God. The foster children, who were mostly teenagers and who had never been through war, said they weren't afraid. I didn't worry. I was in peace and I was in the safe place and I know that everything will be fine. God with us and He will gonna protect us. We were praying to God and I, I felt this peace in my heart and we uh, all became so united and uh, as a one family and that's why I didn't feel that fear. Thanks to some brave drivers from Orphan's Promise, Anya and her children were able to escape to Lviv, where OP turned some offices into shelters. We help to support people who, who are still, in, still be in other centers, to give them food, medicine, to give them psychology support. And the most important part of our job is just gospel. The gospel. To, to share good <laughs> news, because all people are open to accept Jesus. The family is now awaiting visas to go to Switzerland, where they plan to wait out the war. I'm excited, but I'm also a little bit like sad about that I need to leave my own country, my family, my city. About the war, I'm not happy, but the, the possibility that I can go um, to different countries, I'm happy because I it, it was my dream. Switzerland, here we come. <laughs> amen, amen. Okay. Nice report, Wendy. She joins us now from Madika on the Polish border. I understand there's more to this story, Wendy, with the children and their escape. So tell us what happened. Yeah, actually, Gary, it's, it's amazing that this didn't come out during the inter interview. It got lost in translation, I guess. But uh, their, their bus came under fire uh, by the Russians. Their bus was between the Russians and the Ukraine military. There was some fire exchange. The kids uh, went down uh, miraculously. I mean, they got on the bus, uh, you know, uh, on their bellies. Uh, but miraculously, nobody was injured. Uh, so what a story they have to tell. And uh, thank God they got out alive. It's an amazing story. And I know you're at the Polish border with Ukraine now. What's the scene like there? Well, you know, it, it's changing constantly. Let's see, right now, uh, still a little bit of uh, traffic, but you know, sometimes it's just so, so many people, so crowded, people leaving to get back to Ukraine. A lot of folks uh, going back home saying, uh, you know, they're tired, they've been away for a month, they want to go check their house uh, and maybe come back. Some other others saying they're going home for good despite the dangers. And then you've got still a flood of people coming over. So it's it's just like this amazing little town here at the border with lots of humanitarian relief. Everybody is is so, I mean, it, it's so fun actually to be here because people just, they want to help you. They want to, even if you're a reporter, they're like, you know, can, do you need something to drink? Do you need something to eat? And of course, a lot of people getting help right here in our Operation Blessing tent behind me. Well, well, tell us more about that, Wendy. How is Operation Blessing making a difference in the lives of these Ukrainians? So today, Gary, uh, a lady came in. She and her young daughter, seven-year-old daughter, had escaped from, I believe it was Kharkiv, one of the dangerous areas. And the little girl, it was raining really hard. Uh, and she came in soaked and with this tiny little rain jacket. And she asked if we had any coats. Well, thank goodness we have coats here. People have donated coats. And they, they came in. And, you know, I want to just give you a sneak peek so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, one of the greatest things about this tent is it is warm. Uh, and there are hot drinks and there are blankets and there's just uh, people coming and going all the time and come on in here and you can see uh, it already feels so great. It's uh, we have a beautiful little living room. Uh, sorry, I just want to show everybody here uh, where people can hang out. And we've got a kid's corner, Gary, with the Superbook playing. And we've got these beautiful lights to make it fun. We've got people uh, eating, drinking, just uh, getting warm. And so... This has been such a busy place during this entire refugee crisis. We've met, I met three women today that uh, had escaped from uh, one of the most dangerous places and they were on their way to Germany and they just stopped in here uh, just to, you know, they've been on a two day journey with no sleep. So they just stopped in here to get warm and regroup. So it's just, 
We've and, met so many fascinating people, and they've been so inspiring. And quickly, Wendy, uh, we only have 30 seconds. Uh, how can we pray? Hope. I mean, imagine if it was your country at war. People just, they want the war to end. They want to go home. They want to sleep in their own bed. Uh, just pray for them that they, they stay safe and that this war ends soon. Okay, Wendy Griffith, stay safe. Thank you for your reporting, Wendy. Great job. The war in Ukraine has global leaders racing to prevent a famine from spreading to countries around the world. CBN News Capitol Hill correspondent Matt Galka reports. Ukraine is known as the world's breadbasket because it supplies so much grain to multiple countries. But those wheat fields feeding millions of people have since been cut off from global regular supply, leaving a potential food crisis for millions looming. I wish we were meeting under different circumstances, but the reality is that we're facing rise, rising global food insecurity. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen kicked off these high-level meetings by focusing on the dangerous ripple effect of the Russian war on Ukraine. Yellen told her global economic counterparts that Russia is to blame for exacerbating a widespread food crisis. This threat touches the most vulnerable people the hardest families that are already spending disproportionate amounts of their income on food. Moreover, the interconnectedness of the global food system means that people on every continent are impacted. Yellen pointed out that before the war began, some 800 million people lived in areas suffering from a shortage of food. Ukraine and Russia produce almost 15 percent of the world's wheat supply. Impoverished countries throughout the Middle East and Africa rely on wheat fields now cut off from the global supply chain, either by fighting or by blistering sanctions. The U.S. and its allies are working to prevent potentially millions of people from starving due to rising costs worldwide. In the developing world, a typical family of a poor family spends as much as two-thirds of their income on food. And our, our estimates show that for each 1% increase in the food prices, 10 million people may be thrown into extreme poverty. The war is hitting Lebanon hard, where Christian aid groups like Heart for Lebanon are trying to keep up with demand. About half of all Lebanese children are in need of assistance. Lebanon counts on 87% of its grain uh, and wheat from Ukraine. Um, after the port of Beirut explosion on August 4th, 2020, which totally destroyed uh, the grain silos uh, in Lebanon, we've been living off on a one month supply. And now when you have a war like you do in Ukraine, it's becoming very, very hard to get Treasury Secretary Yellen will be having a closed-door meeting with Ukraine's prime minister as she goes through a flurry of meetings with global economic leaders to try and come up with a solution to this global food crisis. Matt Gelka, CBN News. Coming up, the global ministry that's losing churches amidst a leadership crisis. Many are asking, what's next for Hillsong? As I wrote this book, I felt that I was personally on the edge of something so enormously wonderful. It should be made available to everyone who has been filled with the spirit of the living God. CBN presents The Power of the Holy Spirit in You, a new book by Pat Robertson. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, nothing is impossible to us. In this powerful book, Pat illuminates the work of the Holy Spirit throughout the Bible and reveals how the Spirit is working in believers today. I marvel at the strength God gives His people when we realize that the Spirit of God will go like a mighty warrior before us and that none of our enemies can stand against us. Get Pat's book and discover how you can have the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Call now or go to CBN.com. Nutrition, exercise, essential oils, weight loss, and more. It's Healthy Living with Lori Johnson. Talk about what's in this. Join CBN health reporter Lori Johnson to get the latest information from today's top health experts. This is 
fantastic. Find out what you need to know to live a healthier life. Watch Healthy Living, Tuesday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. I'm Ephraim Graham, and this is Studio 5. Cruise with me as I discover the good things happening in the world of music, sports, television, and movies. The fact that Ryan Coogler was going to be directing the film, I knew that something special was going to happen. We'll chat with artists at the forefront of entertainment and explore the connection between popular culture and faith. I asked my pastor, I said, well, does that mean I'm supposed to be a preacher? He says, well, no, you already have a pulpit. Wednesday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. Welcome back. Plagued by leadership scandals and the loss of American churches, Hillsong has taken a string of hits this year. Many are wondering what's next and how the Lord will work in the crisis. Heather Sells has that story. In recent weeks, Hillsong has lost its founder and global leader, many of its American church campuses, and its reputation as a global ministry leader that many churches have sought to emulate. We see churches all over the world you know, mimicking Hillsong style and saying, we want some of what they have. We want Author Caitlin Beatty has long followed Hillsong's rise and style, starting almost 40 years ago as a tiny Australian church. It is spread to five continents with churches in 30 countries, plus a powerhouse music ministry. What a beautiful name it is. They understand that a lot of a lot of us, especially young people, respond to great music, to beautiful light design, to a sense that you can go into a church and it feels more like a nightclub. Dr. Corne Becker, dean of the Regent School of Divinity, says the combination of cultural savvy, extraordinary worship, and gospel presentation all played a key role. The clarity of the gospel that they have proclaimed. Very easy for people to understand, easy to follow. Recently, however, Hillsong has struggled. In 2020, it fired New York City pastor Carl Lentz, who later confessed to marital infidelity. The church promised an investigation for a, quote, fresh start. Then this year... I've agreed to step aside from all ministry responsibilities. Founder Brian Houston stepped down. First came charges that he concealed evidence regarding his father's child sex offenses, and more recently, he admitted inappropriate behavior with women and problems with alcohol. In March, Hillsong's Phoenix pastor left. I never thought I would be standing here today. Taking with him churches in Las Vegas and Tucson. Other branches in Kansas City and Atlanta have separated from the overall organization. People don't come to church for scandal. They come to church um, to have a safe place. The question now, what can be learned from Hillsong's rise and fall? I think it's a lesson for any Christian ministry to be wary of building a ministries or churches success around the charisma of one particular person. I'm deeply concerned that because this is played out on television in the public sphere, that the message of redemption is lost. Becker says there's no question abuse victims must be prioritized and that pastors who fail must step down. He also wants a watching world to see grace for those who've done wrong and hear an apology. For those that are watching the public failures of Christian leaders, I want to say to them that we are sorry. I want to say to them, when we fail in ways like this, we want to let you know that this is not Christ, that he is better, that he is greater. Heather Sells, CBN News. Coming up, weeks of terror attacks, Palestinian violence on the Temple Mount, and now rocket attacks from Gaza. Is Israel on the verge of war? Orphans Promise is committed to loving and serving at-risk children, to helping keep families together, and to creating opportunities for strong and sustainable communities around the world. We're working in over 60 countries around the world, and with your help, we can do even more. 
There's an old African proverb I love that says, if you want to run fast, run alone. But if you want to run far, run together. At Orphan's Promise, we want to run far so we can touch the lives of as many orphaned and vulnerable children as possible. But we don't want to go alone. We're out to change the world, one child, one family, one community at a time. Will you join us? This is CBN Newswatch. Thanks for joining us. Watch breaking news, exclusive stories and programs, credible news reporting. We show you what's happening in the world and how you can pray about it. This is CBN Newswatch, because truth matters. Weekdays at 5 on the CBN News Channel. The Holy Spirit is the mysterious third person of the Trinity, the active power of God throughout the Bible, and God's promise for you today. In his latest book, Pat Robertson unpacks the crucial role of the Holy Spirit in your life, sharing powerful personal testimonies and answering your deepest questions. Get your copy today and discover how you can have the power of the Holy Spirit in you. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com. Rumors of war are swirling in Israel as violent unrest and rocket attacks threaten to set off a wider conflict. Emily Jones has that story and more from Jerusalem. Welcome to Inside Israel, where we show you what's happening in Israel and the Middle East. Simmering tensions in Jerusalem could spill over into an all-out war. For the first time in months, terrorists in Gaza have fired rockets into Israel. In response, Israel pounded Hamas targets inside the Gaza Strip. It's the most intense fighting between the two sides since last year's 11-day war. Meanwhile, violent clashes on the Temple Mount and a deadly wave of terror threatens to bring more instability. This is unacceptable to us. This is a reward for the insiders, especially Hamas, which are trying to ignite violence in Jerusalem. We will not allow this to happen. The state of Israel will continue to provide for and safeguard the dignity of all of us. The Hamas terror group has declared itself the defender of Jerusalem and frequently uses unrest in the holy city as justification for attacking Israel. While Israel faces the threat of terrorism, it has unveiled a new defensive laser system to protect its borders. It's called Magen Or, Hebrew for light shield. For, for the first time ever, Israel's military successfully tested the new laser system. It's designed to intercept aerial threats like rockets, drones, and mortars. The success of the high power lasers live fire test is a significant accomplishment for the security of the people of Israel. The lasers will be integrated with the Iron Dome anti-missile system, which has been effective against rockets fired from the Gaza Strip. The biblical prophet Elisha healed the sick, raised the dead, and called down fire from heaven. Archaeologists say they may have found his house during excavations in the Jordan Valley. What you're looking at are the remains of a 3,000-year-old city. Inside, they found a unique building that points to the prophet. The house has a table and a bench inside, and a 9th century pottery shard with the name Elisha on it. With only six other people by the name of Elisha known in that time for a couple of centuries on either side, we can somehow believe that either there was just the luck that this holy man was also by the name of Elisha, or this was Elisha the prophet himself. Elisha was born about seven miles away from this site. And while archaeologists can't say this is for sure his home, the evidence is compelling. Thank you so much for joining me for Inside Israel this week. To see more stories like this, watch our Jerusalem Dateline program at cbnnews.com. Back to you. Thank you, Emily. When we come back, a tribute to CBN's First Lady, Dee Dee Robertson, who passed this week at the age of 94. 
from Washington, D.C. Good evening and welcome to Faith Nation. Uncompromising stories, interviews, and analysis from veteran journalists David Brody, John Jessup, Jenna Browder, and Eric Phillips. Bringing you the political news that matters. Regulation on the energy industry are going to have dramatic ripple effects throughout the economy. News you can trust. We're people who are committed to protecting the most weakest and the most vulnerable. Watch Faith Nation, weeknights at 6. As I wrote this book, I felt that I was personally on the edge of something so enormously wonderful. It should be made available to everyone who has been filled with the spirit of the living God. CBN presents The Power of the Holy Spirit in You, a new book by Pat Robertson. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, nothing is impossible to us. In this powerful book, Pat illuminates the work of the Holy Spirit throughout the Bible and reveals how the Spirit is working in believers today. I marvel at the strength God gives His people when we realize that the Spirit of God will go like a mighty warrior before us and that none of our enemies can stand against us. Get Pat's book and discover how you can have the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Call now or go to CBN.com. As the world watches from the outside. It's a big diplomatic tug of war here in the Middle East. Go inside the story with Jerusalem Dateline. Israeli archaeologists are talking about a discovery that could change the thinking about the Temple Mount. Join CBN Jerusalem Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell and get the biblical perspective on the events shaping the world. It's what starts in Israel then ends up going to other places. Watch Jerusalem Dateline Friday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. Finally this week, Dee Dee Robertson, the wife of CBN founder Pat Robertson, has passed away at the age of 94. She was a founding member of the board and continued as a member of the boards of CBN, Regent University, and Operation Blessing. And she said that doing the Lord's will had been a great blessing in her life. I have seen more than I ever dreamed I would see. I have done more than I ever dreamed I would do. And it's just been a very exciting life. And working for the Lord is an exciting thing to do. Following his leading and, and doing the things that he wants you to do. Traveled, Dee Dee traveled extensively for CBN. She was selected Christian Woman of the Year in 1986. She was also an accomplished writer, authoring two books and a monthly column for Christian Life magazine. She has a, a good Midwestern common sense uh, view of life. And uh, when I run something by her, she's usually pretty much right on in terms of what needs to be done or what shouldn't be done. So it's nice to have a wife you can pray with and work together with. Pat called her a woman of great faith, a champion of the gospel, and a remarkable servant of Christ who has left an indelible print on all that she set her hand on during her extraordinary life. And CBN CEO Gordon Robertson said, Mom was the glue that held the Robertson's family together. She was also working behind the scenes. If it weren't for Mom, there wouldn't be a CBN. You can see a full tribute to Dee Dee Robertson on CBNnews.com. Well, thanks for joining us this week. Until next week, goodbye and God bless you.